talk about some medications and, and, and why and some side effects and things that you might want to know. So if you're taking cholesterol medication, let me get a different color here. You should know, and that's statins, so many of you that are taking statins, but if you take this medication, you actually cause CoQ10 reduction. In essence, CoQ10 is, a, is like a B vitamin. It's very important. It's a nutrient that your body can produce that is a rate-limiting step for how you generate energy. And your brain and your liver and your muscles use the most CoQ10, and that's why when you become CoQ10 deficient, it affects your memory, your cognitive function, your brain, Right? It affects your ability to detoxify your liver and it affects your muscles. And for many people, these drugs that lower cholesterol cause severe muscle pain, neuropathies, depression, memory loss. These are common side effects of this class of medication because they reduce or deplete CoQ10. Now, some research has shown that these drugs also lower vitamin D. So we get reduction, possibly reduction in vitamin D. And vitamin D deficiency unfortunately, increases the blood pressure. So again, I'm, what I'm trying to show you are patterns that if you understand them, then you'll understand that a lot of the advice that comes out of kind of mainstream, here's a medicine, won't make sense if you follow it through to fruition. So if we're taking a drug to reduce our risk of heart disease, and by doing so, we lower two nutrients okay, and these two nutrients, when they're low, increase our risk of heart disease, then where are we going with this? We're chasing our own tail. CoQ10 deficiency will elevate your blood pressure as well. So we could draw an arrow in that direction. So CoQ10 deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, both will elevate your blood pressure. So to take a medicine in the name of reducing your risk for heart disease, it causes deficiency of both of them. And we know that science has shown that both these nutrients being low elevates your risk for heart disease in another way, you end up, again, chasing your tail. Now, if we talk about blood pressure medications and some of the side effects, I actually wrote my, my nutritional uh, thesis from, to, to obtain my diplomate with, with, clin in cl with the Board of Clinical Nutrition. I wrote my thesis paper on this very topic, which is drug-induced nutritional deficiencies caused by blood pressure medications. And so a number of your blood pressure medications cause CoQ10 deficiency cause B vitamin deficiency, and cause magnesium, calcium, and potassium deficiency. And some of them as well will deplete zinc. So, if we again, if we follow this logic all the way through, I just showed you that the DASH diet studies, one of the longest group of studies ever be conducted on high blood pressure, shows that diets rich in magnesium, calcium, and potassium can protect you from high blood pressure, but I just showed you that high blood pressure medications can deplete calcium, magnesium, and potassium. So again, what are we doing? If we're trying to lower blood pressure and the side effect of that is to reduce these three minerals and the reduction of those three minerals will elevate your blood pressure. This is one of the patterns that I see frequently as a person comes in, they've been put on one or two different blood pressure lowering medications, different classes, different actions. Over time, the medicines quit working as effectively, so the doctor either adds a new one, right? And, and it's because the reason why the effectiveness starts to diminish or starts to go down, in my opinion, is because of the side effects, the nutritional side effects of these medications. Again, we know that CoQ10 deficiency will elevate blood pressure. We know now that magnesium, calcium, potassium deficiency will elevate blood pressure. So again, here you, here you are. You're taking this medicine to correct this problem, but creating these other nutritional problems that have the same side effect as the problem that you're trying to treat. At what point do you say enough is enough and like ask the bigger question, which is why is my blood pressure high in the first place, not what can we do to artificially manipulate it to drag it down some more? Right, so these are side effects we want to try to avoid. Now, from a B vitamin perspective, one of the B vitamins that is mostly affected by diuretics is vitamin B1. Vitamin B1, also known as thiamine, and this particular B vitamin plays a role in your heart health. It's necessary. You need vitamin B1 to make a chemical called acetylcholine. Now, acetylcholine regulates the strength of your heart and the way your heart beats neurologically and so vitamin b1 deficiency has actually is there's a name a disease name for it it's called beriberi and one of the forms of beriberi 
is congestive heart failure. So if we're trying to prevent heart disease, it doesn't make sense. Again, I'm just trying to reiterate here that if we're causing a nutritional deficiency that leads to congestive heart failure, when we're trying to prevent heart disease, we end up, again, chasing our tail. Now, it would be one thing if you went to your doctor and he told you all this and said, these are the risks. That's what we call full disclosure, right? Where you can now have the full disclosure of all the potential possibilities, and now you get to make a really super intelligent decision that's right for you to make. But probably many of you are hearing this for the very first time in your life, and many of you may already be on these groups of medications. And so that's what I want to drive home. You need to be able to go and have an intelligent conversation about these issues with your doctor because if you're not, you're going to end up chasing your tail by creating other risk factors for heart disease by trying to treat the heart disease itself or the risk factors for the heart disease. The thing I want to mention has to do with cholesterol because I think it's important. And the reason why I want to mention this is because it. In my opinion, the recommendations on lowering cholesterol have just gotten more and more aggressive each year. Like we see more and more. There was a study published a few years ago saying that children as, as young as eight years old should all be on statins if their parents have a history of heart disease. Now that's one of the biggest heart disease myths is that if you've got a family history of heart disease that somehow you're doomed to heart disease or that you have this increased heart disease phenomena in your in yourself as well and the reality is is that heart disease was almost non-existent prior 1900 it was actually the advent of trans fat that led to a massive increase in heart disease and then from there we got into scaled farming practices where where uh, food was being grown less nutritionally dense it was being highly processed we were adding so much more salt to different things and so all those all those combinations of things led to increased heart disease over the over the years however it's important that you understand that we don't want to get too aggressive with cholesterol. LDL particularly, which is now what doctors are solely looking at, and if your LDL is too high, they, they want to put you on a statin or they want to aggressively get that to be reduced. Here's a few facts about cholesterol that I want you to understand. Number one, blocking cholesterol, I said over here earlier, reduces CoQ10 and vitamin D, but cholesterol, bad cholesterol, mind you, is a precursor to all of your sex hormones. So ladies, that's for you. That's estrogen, it's progesterone. Guys, for you, that's testosterone. Now, you'll see a trend since we've been lowering cholesterol since the 1980s. The trend is you see more and more hormone doctors popping up, right? Dealing with low hormones. Why? This is one of the reasons why. People are having their cholesterol too aggressively lowered and it's creating a, uh, an epidemic of sex steroid problems, at least in my opinion. The other thing that I want you to know about cholesterol is that cholesterol, bad cholesterol, mind you, LDL won a Nobel Prize because it was discovered that you needed cholesterol to form brain synapses. Now what is a brain synapse? A brain synapse is a junction between two nerves in your brain and it's how those two nerves will communicate. So you can't make brain synapses without bad cholesterol. And a lot of doctors are aggressively going after LDL cholesterol. I will just simply say this. What the research says is that people with higher levels of LDL actually have a greater mortality rate. So uh, lowering LDL has not really effectively been proven to reduce your risk of heart disease. And that's not me saying that. That's a number of research studies that have been published in the last couple of years that are coming out and saying that now. There's one major one study published in 2016. Another one was just published earlier this, uh, in 2018. But the other thing that you want to understand is that cholesterol itself, does, it forms the brain synapse, but if you get your total cholesterol below 150, there's now studies showing that people with cholesterol that are, is below 150 have greater rates of suicide and depression. And so you, you have to be careful. I mean, the doctors, in my opinion, many of them are pushing this too hard. They're pushing it too far. In my opinion, I think they're, they shouldn't be pushing it at all, but um, that's my opinion. And, I, and every doctor has an opinion. That's why they call it a second opinion, etc. So I want you to understand those things about cholesterol because when you mess with cholesterol, you don't just mess with cholesterol. You mess with that whole battery, that whole array of things. So I oh, like this. Linda says, I'm learning so much. I really want to get off the Losartan. Interestingly enough, Linda, uh, I'm going to share something with you. 
Losartan is a class of, of, of medications called uh, angiotensin receptor blockers, ARBs, ARBs for short, another medical acronym. And this class of medication has actually been shown to cause celiac disease. It's been shown to cause celiac disease. Now, I did a special research update a few months ago on this very topic. You should go, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, is go on over to youtube.com forward slash glutenology and subscribe there and check out that link on blood pressure medicine causing celiac disease because many people's leaky guts and GI problems and what they think is gluten sensitivity it, it, we're now finding is stemming from some of these different classes of medications particularly in the blood pressure medication group the ARBs drugs like Losartan can actually cause celiac disease hey and if you missed the earlier part of this series click right here so you can go back and get caught up the information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health and as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.